right. I'm here again. Wow, 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 wow. How about that? I didn't think I'd be back that quick. I've gotten in a little groove here doing these little videos. Hopefully it stays that way for a while. Until I get busy again. Alright. So, I'm going to paint something that I need to paint. I'll tell you why in a little while. Let me find my paint. I need some white. I have a black canvas. I have put Prussian blue all over that black canvas. I'm going to take a little bit of white. And... Oh, dear Lordy. About right there. About right there. Maybe a little bit lower than that is my horizon. I'll take some white now. Just a little bit of white. Yeah, so I said a little bit and I got a lot. And I'm just going to go in here and spin it around. A lot of this right in here in the middle of it will get covered. So I probably don't need to worry about spending too much time in the middle. But be loose. Be loose and free with it. Have fun. Dance some little stuff up in here. There we go. Making sure I hit record. Let's see. You guys will know. Yep, I did. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, kind of incorporating that blue into the white. And I'm going to get rid of that line. I don't need a definite line there. There we go. Now, me, I have to turn this one off for just for a second. No, it's actually better with it on. So, I haven't talked about it. I've got somebody coming to look. Somebody that knows about lighting to come and look about fixing my lighting in here. And hopefully the lighting will get better. And then I'm going to get somebody to do the sound. And then we're going to get a couple of cameras. And those couple of cameras, one will be on the palette. I know I've said this before. But this time it's for reals. Uh, one will be on the, on the palette. So that I don't have to hold the thing. But you guys can see me actually mixing paint. See what that looks like. Yeah, what? I'm so sorry for the glare. I apparently have fallen in love with these black canvases again. So, I'm, oh, that's oh, ew, oh, that was dirty. <laughs> um, yeah. Where the heck? Where did my brush go? Is that it? It's got some dark on it. Here we go. So I've fallen back in love with these black canvases, and I'm doing a lot of these. I can just set that down. Try to get some of that glare out of there for you guys. I wanted to almost paint this just on this black canvas. No paint. So no, um, <laughs> look, I mess it up right after I do that. No paint on the canvas is what I'm saying. Just a black canvas. And you'll see why in a little bit. That is probably good enough. And again, sorry for the glare. But let's grab another brush. And I've got one that's kind of dirty anyway. A little bit of white. I'm going to do this a little differently. Here. A little bit of white and a little bit of blue. With Prussian blue. Somewhere here. Oh, there is going to be land. That looks about right. Oh, don't let your land go up there in the middle. Pretty much a straight line across. And this is going to be... I want that straight line. Almost like a seascape here. I want that nice... There, there we go. Okay. I want that a little bit more blue. A little more blue in here. A little bit darker. The brush has a little white on it, so it's hard to get the dark. There we go. I want it very shadowy back in there. Shadow snow is blue. Yeah. Paint the sides of the canvas accidentally. All right. And some of that black will actually act as shadows too. <laughs> That's probably about where I want that. I'll tell you a little secret. I, I painted this one earlier. didn't care for it. And so, I mean, I've got it. It, it didn't, it's not horrible. Um, but I thought I could do better. Now, the only thing I, I don't like is I'm painting on a cheap old canvas. Because I didn't want to have to gesso one and already had a cheap old done. So, that'd be good. I can touch that up if I want to. Um... But yeah, it didn't turn out the way I envisioned it, I guess I should say. Probably when they don't turn out and I hate them, that's when people like them. It's so odd to me. Yeah, oh, I love that. Karen does that to me all the time. 
I'll paint something, she'll go to bed, and, and I'll, you know, have a pretty good bit of it done. She goes to bed, she gets up, comes back to look at it in my studio, and it's gone. She's like, what'd you do to that baby? Like, I wiped it off with paint thinner. She gets mad. I'm like, I hated it. I loved it. That's not really her voice, it's just, it's, uh, my voice I use, I guess, for her. All right, so I'm going to throw some stars up here. This is a nighttime scene. We're going to go ahead and put our stars in. Now, the thing about this, this may be stars, um, but we may turn this into snow, actually. Oh, it's getting all over my shoes. Hmm. Closer you get with this flicking on there, you get uh, larger clusters of stars or, or snow, whatever it may be. That'll work for now. That'll work for now. So, I'm going to grab my green, sap green, Prussian blue, and a little bit of white. I'll kind of show you what it looks like. So, you don't want to get it too bright, but you also don't want it dark dark, because it would be hard to see on here. And I'm going to do an oval brush. And you're like, oh no, what's the oval brush look like? Well, if I'd grab the right one, I grabbed a different brush. There it is. There's the oval. Oval is a big filbert, essentially. At least that's what I think. I may be wrong. I don't know. And I'm going to pull a lot of paint in here. A lot of paint. Maybe a little more white. There we go. We want to be able to see this thing. We just want the color to stay pretty dark because we're going to highlight it. So I'm painting a Christmas tree. I'm painting it for a specific purpose. There is a local artist around where I live named Robert Tino. Robert Tino is one of my art crushes, and he painted a Christmas tree the other day with just his fingers. Now he used acrylic paint. I'm using oil. Started to use acrylic, but I didn't want to get it out. You get in habits. Um, and he's giving it away. So I want to kind of put one up here that looks like his and see if maybe I can, I can win that baby. It'd be something. I've been wanting to buy one of his paintings. Uh, I'm going pretty much right in the middle of the canvas. I'm breaking all my rules here. My painting, right? I've got that thing almost chiseled up. You can kind of see that edge on it. Now, sometimes I don't. I didn't get enough paint out, so I may have to use a fan or something laying here flat to actually. Make the little top of the tree. Let's see, we want it about right there. Yep. Boy, it could be a little darker. I'm glad I put that up there. A little more Prussian blue in my mixture. There we go. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Perfection. Uh, and then actually maybe help me to get this chiseled, or I can just take, well, if I can find one. Mm -hmm. Apparently I have brought one fan brush back here with me. Come on now. I got a felbert here. That'll work. We can get our line on with the felbert. And we can test our color again. We're on top of our tree. Yeah, that's about right. That's about right. And that's going to come all the way down. All the way down to about right there. It's a big one. It could even come a little further if we wanted it to. Now, I still have this pretty much chiseled. It's just, you gotta use a ton of paint to get that little edge, so I just decided to not do that. Now, if you've watched my channel, you may have seen me use this filbert, shoot, we're calling it a filbert now, on some videos to paint trees. And honestly, I think it does a wonderful hanging down trees, as Bob would call them. See how it kind of gets all of that down. And this is a Christmas tree. So this is a down tree. You can have an up tree as a Christmas tree. You don't have to just have a down tree. A lot of them are uppy trees. Keep that brush chiseled. Go back and grab some paint as you need to. So this is just the base. And I'm going side to side with that thing. Now, do you need do you need a oval to do this? No. 
I actually bought a brush to do this and I was messing around with it and I like the this one better but I got a nice big fat uh, number 12 filbert and I really like the brush I didn't I didn't care for how the tree turned out it wasn't the brush's fault my first attempt I have never of all the things I've painted I've never painted a Christmas tree it just seems absurd to me, so we're going to change that tonight. Going back and forth, and I'm keeping... I like this color because it's not too bright, so we can highlight it, and then that dark will still be nice and dark underneath our highlights. And that's, you know how important that is. The dark is as important as the light. Without the dark, you don't see the light. This is just the structure of the tree somewhere in here. It's for the end. Yeah, there we go. All right. I can take a little more dark here. I can get this thing to chisel. There we go. You're pulling a lot of paint if you're going to use this brush. You're going to use a ton of paint. And I want this kind of full right now because we're going to sock some snow on it, right? It's a Christmas tree. It's going to have snow. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. That will work. In good shape. Now I want it kind of fat at the bottom. So fill it in, feed it some lasagna, and Steve might say, oh, real quick. And, um, thinking of my friend Steve, I want to send a shout out to another friend that's got some medical stuff going on now think of one friend you think of another so I'm just thinking of my other buddy David you say his name and uh, hope he gets to feeling better worry about him we'll go ahead and lay some of the snow in here. There's no trunk in this. We don't need a trunk. What I want this to look like is this is almost up on a hill. So you see my stroke? There we go. There we go. Now I want to get this laid in a little bit and then we'll, we'll I'll probably knife this thing out at the end. But just getting it to where you guys can see the angle and the shape that I want them to use in case you wanted to paint this. A little bit of green getting there is fine. Don't worry anything. I'm raising it. Raising it up a little bit to get that angle. Get that nice slope that I'm wanting. There. And if you're kind of piecing this painting together, and I'm going to already tell you, don't use cheap canvases. If you're past the point of being a beginner, it's time to buy a good canvas because I can tell you a huge difference in... The first one I painted on a really good canvas and this one. There is no comparison between a good canvas and a cheapo. Your paintings look better when they're dry. Um, everything about it just looks better. I mean, it's tremendously better. It's not, it's not even close. I can tell um, a huge difference here. There's our tree. I'll tell you what, I'm going to step in front of the camera real quick. And turn that light off. I think that might help you guys see a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. All right, trying to do this one kind of quick. Really? When I say there's one Christmas, that's all that's in this painting. Getting some white out, titanium white, and I've got some liquid white, or liquid first coat is actually what I have out. And it's the same stuff. It's just called different things. And I'm going to thin that down. And we got to thin it down to where it's going to stick on here. Now here's the problem. This brush is big and that top of that tree ain't big. So how do we get up there and like barely touch that tree? Just like that. Just kind of turn on its side. There we go. I don't want to get crazy with this thing. I have to use my 
hand brush to kind of go back over a few of these areas. There we go. Now it's starting to kind of hit. Skip a little bit. Make another plane there. You can fill that in if you want. Oh. You kind of touch them. Now I've got that paint thinned down so that when I hit this canvas, I'm not going to get green coming back off my brush. This is going to be nice, clean, white. And that's what we want it to look like in here. But that is a heavy, whew, some heavy snow on that tree. Oh, I know. Don't be scared. Don't be a scared. Don't be scared to kind of reach out and get over here. Past where your tree kind of goes out. Let it let it let it do that occasionally. I'm gonna drop down right there's a highlight. The snow's piling on there thick. I want this even though normally this would be way too much highlights. This is not highlights. This is our snow sitting on these trees here. Got to bounce in between there occasionally. There we go. Getting pretty thick, huh? Getting thick. Getting at it. Yeah. Kind of goes out over there. And it comes on down here, kind of tops. There's no trunk. We don't need a trunk. That's kind of what I wanted. You can still see a little bit of that um, dark in there. If you ever run into an issue, you say, boy, I could have used more dark. Go back to your dark color, your green and your blue. And maybe you just kind of go back in. I can use the... I didn't have another filber here. I didn't want to clean it again, so I'm just using a one-inch brush here. There we go. Lock in a little bit of dirtiness in there. Oh yeah. I also have another brush here that would do that really well. That, so I used this on a, a painting the other night that I don't know that I'm going to release because I don't know that I love it. I do have a video on it, but it took forever to paint it because I was painting somewhat from a photo it's not not a copy of somebody's photo or i'd give them credit the idea is from a photo but it's a dagger brush and these are very cool brushes to use but like if i need to sock some dark back in some spots i can but i used this the other night to do some rocks and man does it did, did it do a good job with rocks Oop, I need to wipe it off reload get some dark brought some of that highlight out I didn't mean to do we got painting around with this one pretty good it's a synthetic brush, but it works pretty good, even though it's for oil, sound like a, a natural bristle. I don't even know that they make it, somebody even makes a natural bristle. I've looked on these, but I'm sure they're, they're somewhere out there they do. It's one of Steve's favorite brushes because one of our favorite artists uses it all the time. A couple of our favorite artists. Andrew Tischler and uh, Chuck Black. So, if they use it a lot, you know it must be a good brush. And I'm just socking a little bit more back in there, a little bit more dark back in there. Is that going to hang out over there? All right. <clears throat> I can take my 12 filbert. Get a little bit of little liquid white here. Again, it's I'm using the Hobby Lobby brand liquid first coat white. And I can put, extend that top up just a little bit with that one. Barely. 
touch a little bit, touch up a little bit with this guy here. In a few of these spots here. Okay. I really like keeping those middles full. One of the reasons is like right in here. Like I said, this if this was highlights, this would be way too much highlight. If you fill up those middles sometimes it looks almost like the tree is just saying how do do to you. Kind of sticking out like that. It's kind of right in your face. There's another good spot to just put a little bit of one. Another reason I thought about doing a different video is I had the video going and our heater tur turned on our whatever it's called, a heat pump or whatever. <laughs> and listen at the video. <laughs> Sounds like a freight train's in here with me. I was like, you know, I could do that again pretty quick. It took way too long in the first go. I've been in way too long with this step too, so. I was trying to keep it to 30 minutes. I don't think I'll make it. There we go. That looks pretty good. Except, you see that little spot right there? My brush, this filbert had a little bit too much of that green in it. Ew. I think that has too much liquid white. It might run, but I'm going to try it. There we go. Actually, if you can get away with that, almost straight liquid white, watch this. And that middle part. Just move it around just a tad. Now that's gonna make the next step really hard. So I would I'd stay away from this. But I like living dangerously. <laughs> Apparently. And it makes again another bright spot in that painting. Or on that tree that you're kind of reaching out, saying, hello. You're right in there. I just have to be careful with my lights. I don't want to suck away all that. Dark. There we go. There we go. One more little spot, I see. Right, right there. Just a, just a, just a touch. And I'm barely touching. I like to see that reach out a little bit over there. I've been sitting back here with the paint so long my nose is starting to run. Do you guys get that with oil paint? It's not the thinner because I don't keep that open. There must be something in the oil paint. It makes my nose run like crazy. I know there was one person saw my video and it, uh, they were like, that guy uses cocaine. I can kind of see why I'm always sniffling when I paint. I've got a little round brush here. And I want to see if I can get away with this. Yep. Some little balls or some little lights on here. I don't know. Wherever you think they'd be. Random is better. And what I use for that color is bright red and white. Bright red and white, and it's liquid white. <clears throat> One reason I use liquid white is to make sure that it would stick. Where I have this so thin. Let the lights be different sizes. Some, some might be really big. There's a big one. And you can make these even brighter. You could, you could paint them dark red and then put a highlight on one side of them. And realistically, that's probably a better way to do it. Oop, that's not a very good one. We'll change that one after you're... After I'm done, oh, we need we need a lot of light. So, and this is a little 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 round brush. It's a detail round, I think, is what it's called. You can buy these. This is a this is a Bob Ross one. It's used a lot in the floral paintings. It's 
be random here. There's no. There we go. Let's see how much time. Oh, I'm at 25 minutes, guys. I've only got 30 minutes of record time on my phone right now. Because I've got several videos on there I forgot to delete. Alright, so I'll probably have to stop and change it. Oops. I like the little red ones. They're really showing up pretty good. That's probably enough of the little red lights. Let's look at it again make sure you don't see a pattern in yours. Like, are those lined up? Oh, a little bit. So maybe sock a few to kind of change it. You know, something like that. And then we'll go to clean our brush. Clean it off, dry it off. Then we'll go to some cad yellow. Or I think what I have back here is lemon yellow, which is fine too. I should say what I had back here. I don't see it now. Where is it? it has to be here somewhere. All right, cat or lemon yellow, and a little bit of titanium white, and a little bit of liquid white too, just to make sure it's going to stick pretty good. Now you got to be careful here, and the one reason I would encourage thinning it, with thinner at least, is if you pick up green and come back in here, you're not going to get yellow, you're going to get green lights. And if it's not showing up, my paint's kind of thick. Let's thin it down just a little bit with some liquid white. That will help it stick, and also to not pick up the green. That's underneath. Don't want necessarily green. There we go. Where do we want right there? Right there. And I'm just doing yellow and red. Probably because I'm lazy. But I mean, you could put 18 different colors on here. Lord, we got one of those LED trees in here that just goes crazy with colors. So. Wherever you think you want some yellow, sock it in there. Right there. Brighten that one up. Brighten that one up. Now, thought about putting a little rope here, you know, like an electrical rope, but then I kind of thought. This would be an odd place to have electrical. <laughs> Out in the middle of nowhere. So. These lights. Are either. Lit by solar. Or they're run by batteries. And either one, we could say, would be okay. i got to stop just a second here. <clears throat> and look at it. All right. All right. My phone died. <laughs> I had to stop a minute and recharge there. I think I was about done with my lights. I mean, you could sit here all day and you could, you could put really big ones on here. You can also tinker with the coloring. You know, get some. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, maybe a little star on top. Nah, no star. If I do a star, I'll mess it up for sure. And I may take a couple minutes here after I'm done with the video and put a few other ones in here, but for now, let's stop there. Right there. Let's stop there. I like that. Very subdued dudes. Alright. 
<clears throat> so one thing I see here that I don't like from my other version, like I said, this is the second run, mainly because of my heater. I didn't like the tree as well. I don't like, I've got my horizon a little bit too low there. So I'm going to get in here and just kind of carefully mess that up and then put, put an edge back there. If that's the sky still that we're seeing. Okay. Yeah, that's much nicer. Now I can put some blue snow. If I have any. I don't have too long because my phone will die on us again here. There we go. Grab a little bit of that. I need a little. There, I got some right there. A little bit of white into some Prussian blue. I want it to look different than my sky. But I do want it to be dark back in there. Does that show up? Oh, yeah. Again, this is such an easy painting. If you've never painted before and you're, you're seeing this video, give this one a try. This is this is crazy easy. And it shouldn't even take me as long as it has. But I tinker a lot. But I am going to tell you guys, seriously, again, get some good canvases. Unless you're brand new to this, you don't need to be painting on these junk work, junkers. That's what they are. I, I can even tell just in the blending of that a little bit that is junk all right grab my palette knife clean my palette knife it's got green on it i don't want green snow you want to stay away from green snow and you want to stay away from yellow snow at least that's what people say oh great i got some green in this i might try it anyway i'm a rebel Yeah, I can eat, even this part, guys, where I'm trying to let that um, palette knife grab there, I can even tell a huge difference in the canvases. What happens with the cheap canvases, and it can happen to any, any of you guys with good canvas or not, a lot of people will tell you to gesso your canvases. Well, if you've already got two or three coats of gesso on a canvas, like a good one, if you gesso your canvas and you keep putting gesso over it and gesso over it and gesso over it, sometimes they can get too slick to do um, a landscape, especially especially a landscape like these. Oh, I'm going to have to get some clean snow. It's just too green. I mean, I'm not that particular, but there, pick up a little blue. It'll be fine. So, really, look and see. If it says it's got two coats of gesso, trust it. If it does you bad, don't trust it the next time. You just don't want to keep keep piling on the gesso because the canvas just gets slick. I mean, that's what it's going to do. You're taking away the teeth in the canvas. Goodness, I wiped my I wiped my knife off and I still got green. How is that possible? I got to take that green snow out of there. I'll probably turn the light, the, all the lights on here in a minute and see the green. I don't know where that's coming from, really. There's a little bit of an edge there. Don't have to have that. So thank you for painting with me the last few videos. I mean, you guys are really have sent me some emails with some of your work. Well, wow. better than mine. And that's not uh, me just being nice. I always joke when I see people paint in class. I say, this is my first painting. And it's better than anything I ever did. I say, boy, I'm mad at you. I have to send some of you guys some of those emails. I'm really laying this on thick. What I want, there, there's not much in this painting. Like I said, that's, that's the intention of it. So I'm putting some texture here to add to it. I 
There we go. I'm out of white again. Let me clean up the knife really good this time. So we can get rid of all the green on it. Okay. I think I'm done with the green. I think. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, I am getting some green from the tree that's under there, of course. That's okay. Could put shadows, but I don't know if I told you what envisioning this scene is that the, the moon is actually behind. I mean, in front of the tree, so the moon is shining on the tree. That's why I put that snow on there so bright. Yeah, this is why I have to get some of this green snow so I don't waste it. Yeah, green snow. Told you to stay away from it. Put it right on my painting. See what we got here. Oh, there's a little more green, Brim. Uh, pulling it this way now. Now this is this is not advisable if this was a mountain. You wouldn't want to keep touching this. Kind of no pressure on it. Uh, setting it down in there. I don't want to see big chunky areas really. I just want good thick snow. Right under our tree. Like our, our fancy Christmas tree is up on a ridge. And once you get that look, once you get it to where you like it, I'm going to raise this up just a little bit here. You kind of say, okay, it's done. And then you keep tinkering with it like Bram. All right, there we go. I kind of think that's done. It's unusual for me to say, right? I'll bring just a little bit of that snow down. What you want to have this look like is because if it's trees out in out in the wild, it's a wild. It's this organic wild caught tree here, all natural. You want it to look like the snow is kind of under that tree. So I can push a little bit of that up and then pull back. And a little bit of that green coming down is actually okay for that. There. There we go. It's like that uh, tree sitting up on Mount Hood. Kind of what it looks like right now to me at least. That'd be one heck of a tree if it was that tall. <laughs> Alright, I brought a brush back here with me somewhere. I've got to grab it. Stand up and find it before our phone dies again. I'll back that up just a little bit. Sorry for moving it. All right, man, that is that's bright. We need some falling snow, and then we're done. Okay, we can sign it, but I'll sign it later. Grab some clean white, a little bit of titanium white, a little bit of. Paint thinner. And my paint thinner has gotten really green. We're have clean brushes back here tonight, so if you're if you're there at home, cross your fingers for me. I don't get green snow falling here. Nope, that'll work. I want some bigger pieces and some smaller ones. See that big one? That's perfect. It's really snowing out here, and you want this snow to go all the way down. This is not stars. You don't want it to stop at the tree line. You even throw a little bit down here in case you see it. There we go. Boy, if you had a little bit, a lot of people don't like it, and I don't really care for it myself, but there's a big one. I'll go get rid of that one. Um, if you had a little bit of glitter, Put in that snow or to put in that sky. Ooh, wee. That would be pretty. I kind of like the these because it looks like they're falling. That's a little too big. So what do we do? Last little thing. What do we do if we get one that's just crazy big? 
I get a paper towel and push in on it. You could take the knife too, okay? So I got some of the excess off. Easiest thing to do is to find you some Prussian blue since that's what's in our sky. Go in here. It's easiest to use your finger. It just is. Okay. You kind of move in around a little bit. Don't just stay in that one spot. Just move it up a little bit. Move it down. Move it to the side. And then if we need a little more blue in there, we can put it back. Almost out, so. There. Okay. And then you've got to kind of do something else here. And that works with any kind of fall and snow mishaps or stars. Last little thing I'll do here is put a few back in that place. Okay, there it is. There's a Christmas tree fall and snow on a big uh, bank on Mount Hood, apparently. We'll leave her there. I'll put this one up for you guys to see, and we'll, we'll hope that it's, it's good enough to maybe, maybe impress Robert Tino. Probably not. Not impressing me right now. Not horrible, but for a simplistic painting, I guess it's okay. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll see you soon.